As some of you may know, I'm interested in technology, and I'm interested in how all these technologies are going to help us move to a greener world, not from a climate change point of view. Just, I see the need to transition, and it's interesting how this is being achieved in different ways. One of the ways that stood out to me in a video I saw recently, and now it's not new, as some of you may know, JCB have been working on internal combustion engines that run on hydrogen. Now, JCB haven't been the first to do this. 12 or 15 years ago, probably longer, BMW were doing this with their hydrogen seven car. But what I wondered was why? Why did JCB choose this over say a hydrogen fuel cell or just a battery electric vehicle? Well, JCB are already an engine manufacturer, so they're naturally gonna feel comfortable with that and they're not a battery manufacturer and they're certainly not a fuel cell manufacturer either so it is understandable for them to take this move they currently have a lineup as we know of diesel vehicles and these can go from idle to hundreds of horsepower but with a hydrogen fuel cell it's quite hard to vary it by that much they have to have a battery to be able to store and help assist motors in providing the power so that kind of leads JCB to two technologies that they maybe don't want to take on or just makes it a little bit more complicated for them. Okay, but let's talk about the elephant in the room, the efficiency. We generally get hydrogen from two sources. There's fossil fuels and there's the green hydrogen. Now fossil fuels get this through a process of using steam to extract the hydrogen. And believe it or not, that's more efficient than the electrolysis process for green hydrogen, where you put electricity through water and out comes the two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. So we can produce it green, but we lose about 30% of the energy. So if we started off with 100% of energy that was from a wind turbine, we've now lost 30%. You've then got to transmit it and move it to the vehicle that it's going to be put in. Now, it's a gas, it doesn't take up much space, so it either has to be compressed, and as we know with a compressor, energy is needed there, or it needs to be cryogenically cooled into a liquid, which takes up far less space, far less packaging, but that's an intensive process to cool it down that much, and then you've got to maintain those cold temperatures. So, comparing that again to our wind turbine, there's going to be some transmission losses in getting that energy from the wind turbine into, say, an electric vehicle. But they're nowhere near the losses that you're going to get through the transmission of hydrogen. Let's say hydrogen is going to lose us somewhere between 10 and 30 percent. We'll, we'll stay conservative at 10 percent. So we, we already had 70 percent from before. We're now knocking off another 10 percent. So we're down to 60 percent. Now, this is where the real questioning came up to me so a hydrogen fuel cell is far more efficient than an internal combustion engine right an internal combustion engine at most in those situations is going to produce 25 percent of its energy from its fuel we have been able to get more big ships on a two-stroke cycle are able to use 50 percent of their input energy but they're running at a constant load and they're so big that they're able to use all sorts of different things to make the efficiency go up but that just is not the case with these smaller engines and the type of engines that we end up with in our cars, vans and lorries. We're looking at say 25%. So 75% of that energy is just being wasted. So our 60% from before, we've now only kept 25% of that. So 15% of our original energy that we're using hydrogen for has now just gone, okay? But I don't see that as a bad thing necessarily because if you compare that to fossil fuels and just burning fossil fuels, well, there's there's far more toxic things coming out of the exhaust there. With a hydrogen engine, you're just going to really get water. There will be some nitrous oxides, but JCB have worked to avoid that by reducing combustion temperatures and running the engines lean. The good thing about hydrogen is it can run with quite a range of air to fuel ratios. But I see another hurdle with that. We talked before about a compressor pumping air. Well, 
If you're running really, really lean, you're effectively just increasing another loss and moving air and pumping air, which is one of the reasons why internal combustion engines are not able to reach much higher efficiencies. You've got to move that air to burn with the fuel. Okay, so JCB could have gone down the fuel cell route, but as we mentioned before, that then requires different technologies and batteries. My biggest problem with this technology is that the alternatives could be more efficient if they had pushed to do that. But it's also a good move. It's a, an advancement over where we're at. It's not a new technology, but if they just help that process and push that forward and make it possible for hydrogen vehicles to be refueled on site, then great. My big issue with it though, is painting the engine green, painting the wheels green, and making that appear to be a green thing. But what's more green? Using a fuel that has very low efficiencies, that maybe isn't fossil fuels, or choosing the most efficient option, a pure electric vehicle, which yes, it does have to take those resources of that battery, but is able to just efficiently use the electric straight from the generation through to the vehicle. I'll let you decide. Let me know in the comments. I know I'll have missed a few things with this video. It's just something I was thinking about the other day. And while I might not view it as the greenest, we've got to say well done JCB. You've actually made a step forward. You're getting away from fossil fuels if you push and sell this vehicle. And it is a step in the right direction. I see the sort of people that would use these machines as potentially making the step. In the UK, they used to be able to use red diesel, but recently that changed to using the full fat white diesel. Okay, the only difference is the color and the price. So the cost of running the diesel vehicles has gone up, which could make the jump to a hydrogen vehicle a good option for these sort of businesses. Also, businesses are kind of looking at the angle of being green at the minute. It might help them in winning contracts. I can't wait to see what JCB are doing in 5, 10, 15 years time. Will they have made this more efficient? Will they have scrapped this all together and moved on to something else? We'll just have to see. Until next time, battery man out. <laughs>